All right then, so we've talked about AV, we've talked about IP. Let's talk for a moment about why we might want to put the two together, uh, what are some of the advantages of doing that, but also what are some of the pitfalls that we need to watch out for. So why do we want to do this? Why might we not want to do this? Well, we're going to compare baseband and IP. And let's start with baseband, we're a bit more familiar with that. Baseband has the advantage of being comparatively simple. So take a cable, connect it between a couple of devices, more often than not, you'll get a signal, which is great. It's also very common, of course, for people to use baseband. Um, so there is a lot of familiarity uh, with baseband video, how to route it, how to work with it. It's also very low cost, typically. Um, especially when we're talking about uh, consumer-driven standards like HDMI and DisplayPort, uh, but even professional standards like SDI have come down in cost. So inexpensive and quite effective. However, baseband does start to run out of steam after a while, and typically the first place that you start to notice this is if you are attempting to deal with very high-resolution signals where baseband is only going to offer you limited bandwidth. And that's going to limit either the resolution you can run at, perhaps the frame rate, perhaps how you encode your signal and the number of bits that you are using. Now this is particularly exacerbated if you're trying to do this over longer distances. Typically with baseband, the further you want to go, the less bandwidth you're going to have available to you. And this can all be overcome. It's by no means impossible uh, to do this, but it is nonetheless uh, more complicated if you're trying to send a high bandwidth signal over a long distance. It's also comparatively difficult to route, and this varies a little bit depending on which exact standard we're talking about. Um, but certainly uh, for something like DisplayPort, it is comparatively difficult uh, to take a whole series of DisplayPort transmitters, lots of DisplayPort receivers, and to say, well, I really want a matrix switcher sat in the middle that is going to connect particular sources to particular receivers. Um, now, these devices do exist, but they are specialist devices. That makes them quite expensive, um, and that's not ideal, especially if you're trying to build a large system. So okay, well, how does IP help us with some of these drawbacks? So IP is using what we would call commercial off-the-shelf or COTS uh, devices, uh, network switches, essentially. And there's a huge range of network switches available. Not all of them are suitable for use with AV over IP, but nonetheless, there are substantially more uh, network switches available than there are, for example, DisplayPort matrix switches. So it's helpful that we are using off-the-shelf devices. And that's not only in terms of availability, but also looking ahead in terms of wanting to be able to send more data uh, down a cable. So AV over IP is not quite at the forefront here in terms of bandwidth requirements. There are already devices available uh, that can send substantially higher bandwidth than 100 gig down a single cable over very long distances. So it's great that there is that migration path, or indeed, at the moment, if we want to send multiple signals down one cable, that technology exists, it's available, we just need to buy the right product to do it. So IP is very flexible and very scalable. Um, it gives us a huge number of choices in terms of how we want to construct our network, uh, how we want to send data from our sources to our receivers, and if we have a very large network, we can accommodate a huge number of devices in a way that typically doesn't really scale up when we're talking about baseband video. If we're working with a large system, then baseband can get quite expensive. Huge matrix switches get disproportionately expensive. But if we're working with IP, actually, partly because of all of the different devices that are available off the shelf, actually the cost can be lower for a large system, which is great. There are some downsides, though, inevitably. So IP is quite complicated. We've already mentioned this, um, and there's no getting away from it, so you have to be prepared to deal with that complexity. IP can be cheaper for a large system, but if you're working with a small system, you may find it actually is more expensive than simply working with baseband. So for a small system, you're potentially not really making use of the benefits that IP is able to offer you, but you are nonetheless still going to have to pay for them. 
And it's still very early days, really, in the grand scheme of things when it comes to IP, um, especially in the industries uh, where we're focused. Um, the broadcast industry has been increasingly adopting IP, um, but there are a lot of other industries where really IP is still at very, uh, very early stages, both in terms of its adoption within those industries, but also with, in terms of the products um, that those industries require. So still early days, still plenty to happen, plenty for people to learn. And I guess the message throughout all of this is going to be that you know, a AV over IP can be fantastic. And it's great in some situations, but not all situations. So it's important to have an understanding of IP's strengths, but also its weaknesses, to be able to recognize when is a good time to use AV over IP to really get the benefits from it, and actually, when is it going to be more trouble than it's worth, and you're probably better off sticking with a baseband connection.